the words that we speak, the thoughts that we think, the perspectives, the beliefs that we have, the emotions that we feel or don't feel, and the actions that we take are all on us. And that's what creates our reality. Welcome to From Betrayal to Breakthrough. I'm Dr. Debbie Silber, and today's guest is Christy Whitman. Christy is a New York Times bestselling author and transformational leader. She's appeared on the Today Show, The Morning Show, TEDx, and the Hallmark Channel, and her work has been featured in numerous publications and magazines. Christy teaches the law of attraction, energy mastery, and personal development classes, meditations, and private sessions to help clients feel more aligned with the divine design of well-being, abundance, and success. She currently lives in sunny Arizona with her husband and two boys. Meet her at christywhitman.com. Today, you're about to learn about something called the desire factor and how it can help you heal. Not only help you heal from betrayal, but help you heal from the thoughts, behaviors, actions, and habits that aren't serving you. Want to know how to create love, health, and abundance versus arguing and limitations? Then dive in. Here's Christy. Okay, everybody. Welcome to From Betrayal to Breakthrough. I am with Christy Whitman today. And, you know, we had this conversation, a brief conversation, and she mentioned this thing called the desire factor. And I was so intrigued. She knew it instead of really going into it so deeply with me now, can you come on the podcast and explain it so all of you can uh, can learn about it? And uh, and she agreed. So here she is. Hello, Christy. Nice to see you. I am so happy to be with you, Dr. Debbie. Thank you so much for having me. So happy to have you here. So let's just talk about it. What is the desire factor? And we'll just take it from there. So the desire factor is really a step-by-step approach. It's seven universal principles. That is the way energy sets up to go from having and receiving a desire to literally having it pop into your world and to have a relationship with it as it's already formed. So there are seven principles. Most people have heard of them if they're, you know, in spirituality, if they've been working on themselves, but most people don't have them in the correct order. It's kind of like a padlock. If you get the numbers out of the sequence, the lock doesn't open, right? So these are seven in a row that are downloaded. They channeled through me from the council who I channel. And it's remarkable when people start to really focus on each one of them and they don't take long because it's like, like energy, it's, you know, it's very quick to move, but it ha- is how energy sets up. And the thing to remember about any desire is that we receive these desires because the divine in us knows that we're either going to expand in that or we're going to grow from it. So even if we have a desire to start our own business or to get a PhD or to start a family or, you know, whatever the desire may be it's not so much the end desire, it's who we become in the process. And that's why so many people are denying or suppressing their desires. They go, oh, who am I to do that? Oh, that's gonna just take too much time. Oh, you know, other people have done that before. Oh, I don't have what it takes. And we get into this place of, from our limitations and our, our lack thinking that says, oh, well, this thing that really just excited me and when I think about it, oh my gosh, I can't do it because, and then we make excuse and we argue for our limitations. But when you allow yourself to align, you know, you don't even have to take an action. The action is actually this very seventh step. When you allow yourself to just align with the energy of that desire, that in and of itself has the potential to expand you, to help you dream bigger, to help you become more of who you are and what your potential is. So The desire factor is the name of the book, but I love the, and this was totally given to me too. The subtitle is how to embrace your materialistic nature to reclaim your full spiritual power, because everything in our 3d world that is formed is once energy and there's energy underneath it. And in order to attract anything, we are pulling it towards us or repelling it from us. And so, you know, when when people go, oh, well, that's okay to desire, but that's not okay to desire. Everything here, in whether it's money or a career success or creating a family or health in your body, everything is about the energy that we give it. And then we are in a relationship energetically with it. So it's really about mastering your own energy to be able to master all aspects of your life. 
You know, I, I, I love that. And I want to get into what that energy can create. And it's so true. It's like, when you look at your life, your life is a complete representation of the beliefs you hold, right? Yeah. It, it took us here. So if we want something different, it's got, we have to have a, a different set of beliefs and energy behind it. Tell us why, you know, I thought it was so interesting when you said that the order is very important. What happens when it's out of order? It's like, you know, you ever have that feeling of like, eh, eh. It's like one step forward, two steps back. It, there's not that flow. It's it's more of a pushing. It's like you're the the flow of the desire factor and the principles sets up energy, and it gets more intense and more intense and more intense until it pops. When we do it out of order, it, you're not creating that momentum and that intensity. For example, surrender is one of the principles, but it's the sixth of the seven principles. If someone is like, oh, I desire this, well, I'm just going to surrender before you've actually aligned and focused and have joyful expectancy and the feeling of having and the feeling of loving, it, you, you're not building up that momentum of energy. It's kind of like going into a restaurant and going, oh, I don't care, I'll have whatever. I mean, we are the ones that have to look at the menu and go, oh, that's the thing I like. I, I want that, Right. And so I know that's a simplistic version of, of manifestation, but we're the ones that are co-creative with the divine in us. And so we have preferences and desires and opinions and tastes and you know all of that for a reason. And so when we allow ourselves to utilize that and tap into that, then the divine can work through us. And it's really interesting because this is an example I use all the time is that you know both of us know most people don't know who Marianne Williamson is. And years ago, she got this desire that just came through her to become president, you know, to run for being president, even though she didn't have success in making it to governor in California. So she thought, oh, I'm, I'm going to run for president. Well, she didn't become the next president, but who she became in the process of that and the lives that she affected when she was out on the trail and she was doing all that she was doing Everybody got everybody that was in the experience with her got expanded and had a different way and a different consciousness by listening to her. So, you know, I, I, I love that you just said that because I think so many of us only look at the end goal. And if it doesn't happen, we get so frustrated, so disappointed. It didn't work. Forget it. But what you just said was it's really the process. And that's what, and that's what matters. I hope everybody really just heard that because that's huge. I think we would save ourselves so much, you know, in the way of discouragement, if we realized it's the process and even just having that idea of what to shoot for, it's true. Like you said, who you're becoming. That's really, yeah, that's really interesting. Let's but talk about some real, of the- Really, uh, really, oh, yeah, really sure. quick, I wanted to like touch on one more point of that. Mm -hmm. So the divine did not give me the desire to run for president because the divine knows I would go, oh, hell no. I have no desire that is not no. I mean, that is just a no. I didn't receive that desire. That desire went to Marianne because the divine and her knew Marianne's going to run with it and do the best that she can and grow and expand from that experience. I receive in other desires. So our desires are very, very personal to us from the divine co-creator to have us become more of who we really are. So that's all I wanted to say about that. Yeah, and that's a really important point, point because then think about it. If, if from the divine here, we get this download of something unique to us and we don't do something with it, it's almost like here's a gift that I handpicked just for you and we don't accept it. Yes. That's amazing. Well, if that's not an, an, an extra reason to do something with it, I mean, there you, there you go. Let's every, talk about every day, though, we have an opportunity yeah. to lean into the gifts that the divine has for us. But you said it perfectly. We have to receive it. We have to receive yeah. it. That's really, really true. So you know what? I want to get to what you just said before my other question, which was, tell us about some of the things that we see every day. I think so many of us just go through the day just with blinders on, or we're just hoping to just get through the day period. That's the goal. And we're not either. We're not looking for these things or when they show up, we just don't, we don't even notice them. Give me an example. So everybody can, can hear or watch. What are some, what are some of these experiences that, that, that maybe we, we just brush off as, Oh, it's a coincidence. Oh, that's weird. Things like that. 
Yeah. So it could be someone giving you a compliment. It could be someone paying attention to you. It could be someone calling you to hire you for, you know, as a consultant or a coach or, you know, in your sales position. I mean, it could be any of these things. And if we don't follow through with them, if we brush them off, if we're like, you know, someone's giving us a compliment, like, oh, this whole thing. Oh, I look horrible today. The, these are all these gifts that we could receive in that we just like, it's like playing a tennis game, right? It's like, oh, let me just return that. I'm not going to, I'm not going to hold it. I'm not going to receive this. And so it could be, you know, an opportunity coming and then we get negative about it or we think, oh, well, that's great, but I'm never going to, you know, so our minds, our consciousness either is in the receiving mode is in alignment with abundance or it's in the kind of retracting mode, pushing away mode, and we're in the place of lack. And lack always feels bad. Abundance always feels good. And when we can start to shift our limitations and the constriction, because it's like an energy constriction, when we're constricting, when we're arguing for our limitations, when we're stuck in victim consciousness, struggle, drama, all of that, whenever we say to ourselves, well, you know, no matter what, I can't seem to lose weight. No matter what, I can't seem to get ahead financially. We're, play, we're playing a victim. We're in our old victim consciousness. We're in our old imprints. And those imprints will keep us stuck because we need to be able to move past them. And the beautiful thing about it is all energy. It's a, it takes a decision, a new focus. It takes an opportunity to go, understand that we have the ability to heal those old imprints and to shift into a very different energy. It's always us. It's our consciousness that creates our reality and nobody else is in, tar in charge of our consciousness. The words that we speak, the thoughts that we think, the perspectives, the beliefs that we have, the emotions that we feel or don't feel, and the actions that we take are all on us. And that's what creates our reality. And then of course, our mind always wants to prove us right. So if we're, if we have our story, we're just, we're going to want to be right about that. You know, it, it's, it's really, it's so true. And what's so, what I find so interesting also is those opportunities, like you mentioned, it may look, let's say that job opportunity, it's not necessarily that job opportunity. That's the answer. But what if there's someone there you're supposed to meet? What if it's supposed to lead to something else? What if that opportunity takes you to an event where that next exciting chapter is, yeah. is, you know, is realized? So I think it's, you know, being more, is it being more open to these things, saying yes more? Like, what is it that allows us to have these experiences, right? These downloads, whatever, and, and take them seriously. Well, it's, it's leaning in. It's, it's looking at the opportunity. There's a movie that we just um, saw this last weekend. It's called American Underdog. It's, it's the Kurt uh, Warner story. And this guy, I mean, has a Hall of Famer. He you know, won the Super Bowl with the Rams. He went to other Super Bowls with the Cardinals. I don't know if anybody's a football fan, but um, when he was a little boy, he looked up to Joe Montana and he so wanted to be a quarterback. So he literally ate and breathed and slept football and he got a chance, right? He didn't get drafted. He, he went and worked as a, a, you know, a stock boy in a, in a grocery store and the um, Green Bay Packers gave him an opportunity to go try out. And the coach comes up to him and goes, okay, Warner, get in there. And he's like, oh no coach. I don't, I don't know the plays. And the coach is like, get in there. And he resisted and he's like, and he, the next day he was let go because that's our opportunity to go, okay, I'm in, uh, you know, I'm going to throw, I'm just going to throw the ball. That's what a quarterback does. I'm going to throw the ball. He, he was trying to t think of, a, the, he's like, I don't know the plays. It's that mind of, I'm not going to do it right at that fear of, you know, how am I going to do if it's not perfect or I have to be perfect. Therefore I can't go in right now. And when it's our opportunity, when we're sitting there on the field and someone says, go in, go in. Is it going to be perfect? Probably not. Are you going to learn something? Absolutely. Are you going to expand because of the experience and the process? Absolutely. And I, and I guess you, you know you're headed for growth when it's just outside your comfort zone. Yes. It's not meant to be comfortable. It's meant to be unfamiliar. Absolutely. So, okay. So you talk about these five obstacles that get in the way of manifesting. Can you share what those are? There are five obstacles and they're all within us. So a lot of times it's the words that we say, 
we, we, the minute we say I can't, or I should, or I don't, or, you know, these kind of things, our words matter. I, I created a 30 day free video program. I'd love to give everybody access to if, if that's good with you. Of course. It's called watch your words. You could go to watchyourwords.com. I mean, it, I, they're two to three minutes in length every day, you get 30 days of videos. And they tell you what word or phrase not to say, why, and what to change it to. Because most of us speak in language that pulls our energy down and we don't even know that it's doing it. So that's an obstacle. Our language, our vernacular is an obstacle for us sometimes and we're not even aware of it, which then leads to our thoughts. Our thoughts, if we're thinking, oh, I'm not, I'm fat or I'm this, or I'm not good enough, or, you know, this is never going to work for me. Those thoughts can be the obstacles to getting in alignment and creating what we want. So our words, our thoughts, our beliefs, right? The words create thoughts, thoughts create beliefs. And they're all those different obstacles, our beliefs that, well, that's not even possible, right? I, my, my mom said to me the other day, well, you know, everybody when they get older is going to get arthritis. And I said to her, I go, I don't believe that. And I go, and who told you that? She goes, oh, my doctor told me that. And I said, well, guess what? Your doctor is wrong <laughs> because I know a lot of people, especially clients of mine that don't have arthritis when they get older. And she goes, well, you know, and it's like, I don't believe that you can choose to believe that. And that'll create the, that'll compound the reality that you are feeling and experiencing, but that does that serves me no purpose to think that every single person is going to get arthritis as they get older. So that will be an obstacle to greater health, you know, to say, there's nobody that does what I do and nobody wants what I have, right? Those are, those beliefs are obstacles to having the great success that we want, or, you know what? If I, when I, I got a divorce when I was 35, if I would have said, listen to ladies in sex in the city, that I'm more likely to get hit by a lightning rod than to find a single man, you know, if I would have believed that I would have been closed off to finding my now husband of 15 years, who was 36 at the time, never been married, never had kids. Right. And it, it's like, what do we believe we create? So that's another obstacle. Mm -hmm. Our, our emotions, those stuck places but you brilliantly talk about the betrayal, that feeling of hurt and resentment and betrayal. If we are not cleansing and cleaning out the energy of that, that can become an imprint. And what happens when we have an imprint, we close down our hearts, right? And energy continues to move. We're energy beings. If something happens to us and instead of feeling it and releasing it and gathering the information from it and learning about it and all that stuff, I mean, we're here in a land of polarity where there's very many different experiences. If we let that define us and imprint us, what happens is we close down and the energy spirals and spirals and spirals, creating a vortex for more people to come into our lives to disappoint and betray us. So that, and then the actions that we take, why don't we go? Why don't we move into a different way of being? Why don't we date a different type of person? Why don't we get into a, you know, a different type of partnership? Because the actions, the behaviors, the, the habits that we do, a lot of times are based in lack and limitation. And then we can't get out of it because we feel stuck. We don't know another way. And so to get past those obstacles is to refocus not only our, our heads, our minds, but our whole energy field. And how do you do that? By three questions. What do I want? So simple, but it so works. What do I want? Why do I want it? And how do I want to feel? If we can take any contrasting situation, especially someone has betrayed you and go, okay, this feels crummy. I don't want to experience this again. We all know what we don't want. What do I want? I want to have someone that is supportive. I want to feel that I have someone that is committed and loyal and try, and I can trust. I want to have faith that I'm going to be in a, in a safe place. I want to feel that I'm protected, right? Whatever it is, right? What do I want? Why do I want it? I, I, I want to feel good. I want to, I want to be open to love. I want to be open to friendships and great experiences. I want to live my highest potential. Whatever the why is, that gets our emotions involved. Because it's not just a head thing. It's not just a mindset. It's a whole totality. We're a whole person. We got a mind, a body, emotions, energy, right? 
So what do I want? Why do I want it? And how do I ultimately want to feel? Because we all think we've been trained. If I want to feel successful, I got to go get that accomplishment, or I got to make that amount of money, or I got to have that guy, or I got to get married, or I got to have the children. It's always an outside in approach to creation when we are the creators and we create by energy. So if we're, if we're understanding, I don't want that anymore. I actually want to feel free. I want to feel supported. I want to feel love. I want to feel abundant. We're the ones that have the feelings inside of us. So we just have to connect with that energy. That's why myself and the council teach courses on quantum energy mastery. It's all about mastering our own energy because if you master your own energy, you've mastered everything in your life. Right. And, and you know, this comes up all the time within the PBT Institute. Let's just say you're thinking, acting, believing in one way. And then all of a sudden you, you ask yourself these questions. You start changing your thoughts, changing your beliefs. And the people around you don't like it. They don't like it because they liked where you, knowing where you stood. They liked knowing that they could either control or manipulate you. They liked, you know, they just like knowing where you were at and now you are changing the rules, right? How do you manage that without sabotaging yourself? Well, I, I like to think of it as, you know, you have two people dancing in a relationship and they're doing like the cha-cha, right? And then all of a sudden you go learn the salsa and they're like, well, wait a minute, we were dancing the cha-cha here. And I don't want to learn the salsa, right? So it's like, go, you learn your own salsa, do your best salsa. And it, those people will either come around or you will attract new people to salsa with you. And it's really interesting because I've been doing this work for 25 years and you know, doing it on myself first before I professionally started doing it 20 years ago. And all of my friends, my family, everybody around me was like, she's lost her mind talking about energy and universal laws. And they read my first book, Perfect Pictures and thought, oh my God, what is she talking about? You know, she's like, she's really lost it. And so, you know, there were some people that I just chose not to speak to about it because they weren't going to get it. But as the more I spoke about it and the more I, you know, increased my own energy, I started collecting friends that started getting it. I had a different group of friends that I could talk about energy with and talk about universal laws. I was creating my own community. And then of course, when I went online and started teaching this, I have my own community now. Like, and I feel so supported, right? But all of my friendships, I've had friendships for almost 40 years, 30 years, you know, a lot of my really good friends, now they're coming around going, so talk to me about this energy stuff right? You talk about this like law of attraction. What is that? What is the healing stuff that you do? Who is the council? And I, I look at it as like, you've, you are baking this beautiful, tasty cake, right? And in the beginning, at least I was like this, it's like, oh my God, this is the best thing ever. You know, when I found out about universal laws, I wanted everybody, everybody I cared about has to know about this because it's life-changing. I could see how it's changing my life. But it was like having this amazing, the best tasting cake ever and going, Dr. Debbie, eat the cake. And you're like, I don't want your cake. And I'm like, no, you got to eat the cake. And now I'm shoving it in their faces and they're like getting more and more resentful. Like, I don't want your cake, right? Just eat your own cake, right? Raise your own vibration, create the life that you love, release the places where you need to be healed, do your own healing work. Those around you will be like, wow. Look at her. She seems joyful. She seems happier. Wow. Look at what she's creating. What are you doing? But when we try to push it on people, they don't want the cake. It's yeah. like, eat, eat your own cake. Yeah. That makes so much sense. But what, and what I see so often is we're sort of outgrowing our group because we're thinking differently. We're acting differently, but we don't have a new group. So we assume I'm going crazy. It must be me. And then we sabotage ourselves so that we don't outgrow our current group, but it really prevents us from that growth. So it sounds like what you're saying is just do your thing and the people that who resonate with your new message will show up. Absolutely. You will. Yeah, that makes total sense. We're constantly attracting everything in our world. So, you know, if we're now vibrating in a different way and we're thinking we're healing, we're going to start attracting other people that are doing the same thing, whether it's through an online community or, you know, things that you do in your own community where you live. I mean, you will start meeting more people that are vibe vibing at the same place you are. It's, it's universal law. 
you know, and I remember on just on such a practical level, when this happened with me 15 years ago, when I, when I started really getting into spirituality, I remember reading, it was probably the secret or one of the, like my, you know, my first books on spirituality. And I didn't know anybody. I didn't know a soul to speak to that I could speak with about this. And it was so exciting. And, and I was learning about, you know, Esther and, and Abraham and, and Neil Dell Walsh, Marion Williamson and all the, I wanted to have a whole conversation. I didn't know a soul. And I really, I was very, um, very left brain about it. I thought, okay, well, other people are reading these books too. Where do they go? Who do they talk to? Where can you find them? So anybody listening to this, it is so common that you may be outgrowing your group. So just vibrate at that other level, you know, like Christy's saying, or just figure out where these people are and, and find them. Let's talk about divine design. I want you to get into that as well. What is that? So just like we know we're human, right? You can look at us and go, you're a human woman, right? We can look at a man and go, you're a human man, right? We, we don't look at it like a dog and go, hey, that's a human. We know that a dog has ears, floppy ears, a tail, you know, birds have beaks, wings, those type of things. We know we're a human because it's our divine design physically to stand upright. We have two legs, two arms, two eyes, one nose, one mouth. I mean, we're all from the same design. An acorn, and you plant that seed, it becomes an acorn, Right. It becomes an acorn tree, which then produces more acorns. It's the programming and the pattern in the physical world that an apple seed becomes an apple, an acorn becomes an acorn, a human being is a human being. What we don't see for the human side of us from the spirituality side of us is that we are designed with four quadrants in mind to take this journey so we have everything we possibly need. And those four aspects, which we do not see, is that we are designed to have well-being. We are designed to be abundant. We are designed to be successful. And we are designed for loving and supportive relationships. That as we align and we come back into alignment, we find that co-creative relationship, those aspects of our lives, those four aspects of our divine design get back in alignment. I've seen this over and over and over with clients that have had pain in their body that come back in alignment, the pain is gone. They have migraines, lifetimes of migraines, the migraines are gone. Digestive issues, it, the list goes on and on because it's the consciousness of ourselves that creates our reality. The light is kind of like a, um, if you're going to a movie theater, right? The, turn on the light, the light's going to shine through the projector, but whatever movie you put in the projector is going to go on the screen. If we have a consciousness that is in horror film, Horror film is going to project onto the screen. But if we change out the movie and we put in our projector, love, a love story, a rom-con, you know, whatever it is, it's going to project on the screen of our lives. The light is consistent. That the light and for us to receive in that light, that light translates into our divine design of well-being, abundance, success, and love. So when we are bringing in that light and our consciousness, again, we started our conversation here, is open to that energy and we then see what well-being is and what success is and abundance and loving and supportive relationships. When our movie and our projector, because we are the projector, when our movie is projecting that, that's what we then see. But it's our consciousness that creates that. The light will consistently be there for us projecting whatever our consciousness is into our reality. And, and I, and I, I want to ask you one final question about that, because this for me feels like the most challenging, but this is what is absolutely needed. How do you believe in health? Let's say if you're sick, how do you believe in wealth if you're broke how do you you know how is it because it is it's true we create all of it but when your current lived experience doesn't represent that how do you get past that so that you can shine that light the way you're talking about well that's why it's important to understand universal laws because two of the laws i'm going to bring up right now there's a law of polarity when on in the 3d realm that we are in there is a polarity. It's evidenced by hot on one end, like extreme hot on one end and extreme cold on the other end and every single degree of temperature, right? That exists. 
we have up, we have down, we have left, we have right, we have in, we have out, we have lack and we have abundance. I'm going to combine, there's another universal law, the law of sufficiency and abundance. Everything in this universe is abundant, even lack. When we're stuck in lack, we get evidence. There's an abundance of lack. It's just the nature of our universe. Look at our, our bodies. We have an abundance of cells. We have an abundance of breaths and heartbeats and, and like, Look out into our universe with the stars and, you know, the grass, the blades of grass or leaves on the tree. I mean, it's, we live in the ocean. We live in an evidence world of abundance. When you have a spectrum, lack is on one side, lack feels horrible. It's bad. It's just, that's where bad feels. On the other side is abundance, right? So there's lack of one side. Lack always feels bad. That's where all the negative emotions are. Abundance on the other side feels good. That's where all the positive emotions are. In between that tipping point is satisfaction. That's where we have the fulfillment. That's where we could be like, okay, I'm at least satisfied. I'm not over the moon, but I'm excited for what's coming. Abraham Hicks talks about that. The best place to be is satisfied where you are and excited for more. That's what they talk about, right? It, they're talking about the law of sufficiency and abundance. Because when you can understand that everything is a spectrum, whether it's money or career success or my relationship or my body, if you are on the spectrum of pain, you know, disease, just dysfunction in your physical body, there is a version of you right now in the quantum field that is in abundance of well-being. But when we're stuck there and we're only, we see a very myopic view, this is what I see because the pain in my body hurts, right? People say to me, well, how do you know? Well, I pulled out my back where I couldn't walk. I pulled out my hip. I mean, I've had things like that, but the focus is on, I am well. I, a couple of few months ago, pulled out my back. I couldn't walk. And as I was trying to get up, I'm like, uh, you know, and I'm like, I am well, I am well, I am well. I was continuing to bring in the energy of I am well. And the things that happened, I was able to call my rolfer, who literally is never available unless I have this appointment with him. He was able to come that day, strengthen me out. I was still sore, went and saw an acupuncturist. She got me in right away. You know, it was like everything just came into, like I was saying, it's like everything flowed so that within five days, I completely healed my back. It would have been really easy for me to go, well, I'm 51. It's all going to hell in a handbasket. You know, well, now I have a bad back. My mind never goes there because I know that if I'm having this experience, and even if I'm in excruciating pain, there is a version of me that exists right now in the abundance of health, in the abundance of wealth, in the abundance of support. That's the thing with what do you want? Why do you want it? How do you want to feel? When you're in that pain, even when the pain shows up, and you know, I teach energy mastery of how to release that energy of pain because it all has to do with our emotions. And I'd love to do a masterclass for, you know, to show that. But the, the, the understanding is I'm stuck in this energy right now. And in order for me to change my circumstances, conditions, events, relationships, I have to be vibrating at a very different level. If you keep giving out lack, you're going to continue to get more lack. But if you shift into abundance, this changed my life 25 years ago. When you shift into abundance, your world changes. You, you, you can heal your body. You, you know. I I think it was about six years ago, I started to gain weight and all this stuff. And I went and saw, you know, a traditional hormone doctor. And she's like, oh my gosh, your testosterone is low and your estrogen is high and your blood work is this. And we got to put in, you know, some different things to regulate your hormones. And I'm okay. You know, and I had people just telling me, well, you're 45 now, you know, that's when you start gaining weight. And, and I'm like, no, I'm not going to accept that. I want to heal this. And I remember I went into the doctor and she was putting in this thing and she had to do an incision in, in my hip. And all of a sudden I got this message, don't do it. And so I said, stop. And she goes, why? I'm about to put the pellet in. And I said, no, stop. And she was all, in all my 20 years of medicine, I've never seen, you know, got all huffy. And I'm like, well, I'm getting a message not to do it. The very next day I met a woman that helps people heal her, their bodies through herbs and stuff like that. I started working with her taking herbs, natural su substance. I am now 51. I weigh less than I did at 45. My blood work is better than it's ever been. My hormones are awesome. I mean, I'm more healthy now than I've ever been because yeah. I didn't, 
your body so. wants to heal. It absolutely wants yes. to heal. And so this is really, uh, it's listening, listening to those messages, trusting your gut, trusting in your, your, your wise inner guide and seeing, seeing the abundance, even though it may not be there in that very moment, it's there seeing that version of you. Christy, this has been such an interesting conversation. I, I, I feel like I can talk to you for hours and hours. <laughs> Where do we go to learn more about you? Well, you can go to watchyourwords.com. I also have my podcast, The Desire Factor podcast, or you can go to christywhitman.com. Oh, Christy, thank you so much. I know everyone is getting so much and we'll get so much out of this conversation. Thanks so much for today. Thank you for what you do. Appreciate you, Debbie. So many great nuggets like the obstacles keeping us stuck, our words, our thoughts, our beliefs, our emotions, and our actions. To get a handle on your words and stay in touch with Christy, go to watchyourwords.com and we'll have all of our information in the show notes at thepbtinstitute.com forward slash podcast. Here's my biggest takeaway. The three questions that change everything. One, what do I want? Two, why do I want it? Three, how do I want to feel? Those three questions can set you on a new path to change your current beliefs, circumstances, and so much more. Give it a try and see how it works. You know what else works? The PBT Institute, where we have everything you'd ever need to become your physical, mental, emotional best. Community, support, certified coaches and practitioners you could schedule time with, daily classes on all kinds of interesting topics, curated experts teaching advanced strategies in the areas of health, mindset, spirituality, personal development. Imagine the most friendly, welcoming, and supportive place to become your best, and it's all online. Nothing like this exists and I am so excited to welcome you. Go to the pbtinstitute.com forward slash join to learn more. Thanks for listening. Can't wait to be with you next time and here's to your breakthrough.